the percentage in terms of modern education is very, very low. Because parents will tell young boys and girls, saying, even if you go to school, it's for you to find money, to so start finding money now. And you must engage in this economic activity, which is the fishing. So as we'll be going along, you'll be opportunity to see some of these young boys and girls fishing. Okay? Yeah, cheap in New York. <laughs> so, you did. You know what I'm saying, B? For all who don't know, this is a humble and experience. Absolutely. This is where our foremothers and forefathers were taken from before they was brought to the Western world. of no return. Here is the main entrance and this is the first point of no return. After they sold an individual as a slave, as soon as that person enters here, nothing will make that individual to go back to the land. Nothing. Even death. Because if they died here during that time, we will be going to the cemetery. So here used to be the first point, the main entrance and first point of no return. Yeah? yeah? So you welcome into the slave force. Until now. Yeah. Yeah. We're returning. And we have the DNA in us. We have returned, ancestors. We leave. On our right hand side here used to be the dormitory. It was a two story. But as you can see, Bond's Island is in ruins presently, even though they are trying to restore it how it was in 1805. You turn back here, on our left hand side, here used to be the place where the British used to put their flagpole. Here, to show that yes, they are in charge of the island. Here used to be the place we are the used to put the British flag pole right here. You come further a bit, please. Yeah. Right here, you're seeing eight cannons. And on this cannon is a crown. And this crown is representing King George the Third's crown. That monster. You can see 
the KRG, King George the Son. And all the canons of the the time when Bonds Island was founded, around 1670, because they were using these canons to protect this island. Lots of pirates they are coming during the time for slavery here. And officially, Bonds Island was attacked four times. By who? Locally, the French pirates. people. No, oh, virus. Locally, it was attacked time without yeah. number. Yeah, for because us. Because the Lesbians, yeah. who were capturing them, coming with them here to sell them, for reasons best known to other people. But we'll be going to, from here to that other place, and I will explain how slavery, how, or how slaves were acquired during the time slavery was going on in Sierra Leone. And don't forget, Bones Island was the hub or center for slavery for the whole of West Africa. So all Nigerians, Nigerians, Guineans, Liberians, they were taking them here before ever they take them to different parts in the world. Yeah? Let's come on this side, please. My beloved brothers and sisters, this place here is called the fireplace. This was where one of the most inhuman activity was done. During the time when slavery was going on here, here used to be a big pot, and in the pot used to be fire. In the fire used to be different sizes and types of iron. So after they sold an individual as a slave, this is where they take that person for branding. They use one of the irons and then brand them to mark them as slaves. Yes, here in and out, the irons will be in that fire. So they take one, and then they started marking them in their cheeks, their backs, their, th their legs, their thighs, to mark them, to brand them as slaves. The two rooms on either side used to be the rooms for the men. So if the capacity of this room is supposed to be, for example, 60, maybe 200 will be in there. They will be packed there like sardines. It used to be purely for the men who will be going where the women and children used to be, yeah? So here is the branding place, yeah? So let's go outside, please. Oh. Oh. Ah. See, you got me on your mind. You look for happy to me while I'm actually there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be the marketing area. Here used to be the negotiating area. All the slave buyers, they do come here and they used to pack the ship on this other side. And they come and they, they will say they want one rope. One rope simply means 10 people. So they will take the slaves out from their respective rooms. They will be sitting right from here. 
ready for bagging, ready for negotiating the various prices, exchanging them for one stick of cigarettes, exchanging them for one spoon, exchanging them for clothing. So Four ways option. slaves were acquired. But the two main ways, originally, slavery proper and improper slavery. So this slavery proper and improper slavery are further divided into four. The one, the witchcraft. Two, prisoners of war. Three, those that are willing to sell themselves as slaves. Then four, debtors. Now for the witchcraft, in those days, so this they will just say, um, this man is a witch because he's physically fit. Then he will say, no, I'm not a witch. Then they will have to say, if you are not a witch, you are going to eat this food. And if you eat this food, you did not vomit, then you are not a witch. But if you vomit, then you are a witch. But the food is a slightly sauce. Even if your, your system is okay, no matter what, as soon as you eat that food, it's a must for you to vomit. So at the end of the day, the man will just say, okay, I'm a witch. He sell the man as a slave. So that's the witchcraft. Then the second one, the prisoners of war. Maybe village A and B, they will wage war. But maybe village A, the people that are there, the young boys, they are stronger than village B. So all those that will be caught during that war, locally, will be sold as slaves, as prisoners of war. They will sell them as a slave. Then you have the debtors, the third way. For instance now, if here is a man, and this man has given birth to so many children. Unfortunately, he cannot take care of all of them. So what he will do, he will go to the chief. He say, chief, I want to do farming activity. Unfortunately, I don't have the seeds. So please, help me with two bushels of rice. After I harvest, I'm going to give you back your two bushels of rice. But give me this rice. After farming, I will give you back with a profit. And the chief will say, okay, you determine the profit. Then he will say, I will return back three bushels of rice. The chief will say, okay, here is the two bushels. Go and do your farming. Unfortunately, that man will not be able to even have maybe one and a half bushels of rice. But before the chief gives him the two bushels of rice, the chief will say, what is your collateral? And that's the time the man will say, here are my two boys. They will serve as collateral. If I fail to give you back your three bushels of rice, then you have the right to do whatever thing you want to do with these two boys. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the man will fail. So when he fails, then the chief has the right to sell those boys into slavery. But so that's the depth of... that could be the possibility. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. So that the then you have the first one, which is the willing, those that are willing to go into slavery. Yes, in those days, you will see this man, maybe they'll just consider him to be a worthless person in the village. If they want to take a decision, even if he says something, they will not listen to him. So he will consider to be useless. He called them the village idiot. So he will just say, okay, chief, here is my family. Give them whatever I want to give them. Sell me as a slave. I'm not useful among you guys. Mm -hmm. Willing. Yes, he goes to slavery. So these are the four ways which slaves were acquired. People were captured. For instance, like Sengwe Pierre, he was captured whilst he was going to his farm. And he was one of the people who was fortunate to pass through this island, and he was fortunate to come back to Sierra Leone. So Sengbe Pierre was captured and sold for the fourth time to a Spanish slave trader called Jose Ruiz. He was born in the 1813. He was the leader of the Amistad Revolt. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. In late January 1839, he was captured and sold as a slave to one Spanish slave trader called Jose Ruiz. On the third day, while they were traveling to the sugarcane master's farm, he secretly used one of the spikes in the boat and cut his chain. When their master went down the boat, he quickly went to his colleagues, he cut their chain, then he gave them cane knives. Then he said to them, go and kill the captain. The name of the captain by then was called Captain Ferrer. They went, they killed Captain Ferrer. Then they threw his body in the water. Then Sengwe Pierre told those who were controlling the boat that, take us back to Africa. But he said those words in Mendy. And there was a one boy who was called Kali. He was 10 years old by then. So he served as interpreter between the group of the slavers and that of the group of Sengbe Pierre. So when they were taking them from Africa, they used the sun as their landmark. 
So he was just saying to those who are controlling the boat that turn the boat so where the sun is rising from. As there we believe is Africa. But they were tricked, especially at night. During the night, those who are controlling the boat, they will turn the boat towards Cuba. Then the boat will be in its highest speed. During the day, they will turn the boat towards Africa. Then the boat will be in its slower speed. Finally, they were captured by making soldiers. They charged them for murder and piracy. But the sixth president of the United States of America, John Quincy Adams, he was the man who advocated on the behalf of the Ukrainian back to Sierra Leone. He stood firmly during their trial in the U.S. He succeeded in doing that. They brought them to arrive in Sierra Leone in 1842. But that great hero died in 1879. And today, for us to remember him, there are certain places which are named after him. And even on one of the money that we are presently using, which is a 5,000 years note, yeah. his picture is on it. Mm -hmm. Pierre, hero of the Amistad Revolt. And some black colleges today, in the U.S., according to oral history, because we have three sources of history, we have the oral, we have the written, or the archaeological or digging of history. So according to oral history, they said, some black colleges today, his name is written boldly on those colleges in, in the U.S. And in those days, if you want to collaborate the history of America to that of Africa, to Sierra Leone, to be precise, it will never be completed with the history or without the history of Sengbe Pierre. Because during that time, so many Americans, they pay just for them to go and see him. Some even pay just for them to go and listen to whatever he was saying, although he was saying most of the words in Mende, because Mende was the general tribe they decided to use during the time for slavery instead of Creole. It was after slavery, the Creole emerged. Yeah? So Kali still served as interpreter between the group of Sengbe Pierre in court and that of the Americans. And even Kali wrote a letter to John Quincy Adams. When we, will, when we will be doing city tour, hopefully, let's say tomorrow or next tomorrow, I'll try my best to get rid of that letter so that you will see a copy of the letter. It's mixed up with English words, Mende words, Pidgin English, Creole, but John Quincy Adams actually understood what Kali was trying or the message he was trying to disseminate to him. Yeah? So he played that pivotal role so that Sembe Pierre's group will come back to Sigali. And they came and they arrived in 1842. So let's move to the next point, please. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm trying my best to be brief. Because normally, when I'm doing so here, for me to explain in detail, I used to spend two hours, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brothers and sisters, when we started the tour, I told you that here we have two points of no return. I've already showed you the one. And here is the final point of no return. The final point of no return. After those that are buying the slaves, when they come, if they've bought one rope, two rope, three rope, they have to take them here. There used to be the whole where the women used to pass. It used to be a two-story building. And in this place here is the observation room where all the slaves you are going through and the ship will pass over there. They have to pass here, they have to rebrand them because all these slaves that you are bought, maybe five or six or seven people, slave buyers will come and buy these slaves and put them in the same ship. So each and every one of them have to give different marks again to yeah. identify their slaves. Yeah. 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 So yeah. They so they burn them again. Yes, they brand them again according to my own folk. For instance, if you are all fishermen, we are all doing the process, we are all fishing now, we are catching the same fishes, so we have to mark, all of us, we have different marks. Maybe I will mark mine with X. Yeah. Maybe she will mark hers with, mm -hmm. just correct, and some with just zero, some with just dot. So they have to go through that process again. So here is the final point of no return. Here used to be the, 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 the place where the women used to pass, and here used the place where the men used to pass. Final point of no return, in a way that if, for instance, now, here is a woman, she has gone through this process, and her child is just standing over there crying. She will never come back as soon as she enters here. Even if she dies inside here, she will not be taken here again. They have to throw her dead body in the sea. That is why during the time for slavery, you will see the fishes. As soon as they see a boat, they will be swimming. 
because they know that maybe they are going to throw dead bodies so that they will be freed sure. from the dead bodies. Yes. Yep. Yep. So even if that child is crying here, the woman has gone through this place, no matter what, nothing will take that woman back here, even to come back for that child. The child will be taken care of by another person. Yes? And on top of here used to be a security post where the British used to be, and they were having a small dining room there. And they used to go and eat one after the other. And just very close to this place here used to be a kitchen where they used to cook for the place. And the cooking is being done by slaves again here. But maybe they feed them once a day. Maybe twice a day. Just for them to feel weak, even though they have the place where they used to exercise. From here we are going there. That will determine their price. How physically fit they are. That will determine their price. But this was where they used to cook for the slaves. Yeah? Okay, so let's proceed. Right here, this is the combine. That's what it is, right? Look at that tree wrapped around that building like that. Shit crazy. Oh, but Beloved brothers and sisters, here are two entrance. Get any time for slavery? I already showed you the men's room, right? So they used to take them from that side. They will never enter here because here used to be the room for the women. So after they take them from that side, they have to enter into this side for them to come and exercise. Come in, please, come. And the women, if they want to go outside, for them to go and eat, so they use this other room, where we are entering now. They use here. So this area used to be the place for the women, the room for the women, all this area. It was having a block here, right down this side, it used to be only for the women. And the back used to be the room for the children. Yeah, yes. Oh, wow. So after they brought them here, would they let them engage with their children or no? Yes, they, they do have time for that. Like, um, it's when they give birth to a child, as soon as they give birth, that child is automatically asleep. So it is not possible for you as a woman to be breastfeeding your child as and uh, all, the, all the time. They will do it as and when necessary according to the time, the willingness of the British. Yeah. So they have, to, they have a specific time when they will take their children and breastfeed them. Even if they are in their crying. For breastfeeding, they will not until they are, it, it, it pleases them. Until it pleases them, 
they call the mother, come and teach your child, breastfeed this child right in front of them. And they have a time for that. After that, they take the child again over there. Yeah, that's how they used to do them. Yeah? So, in the morning, after they take maybe one or two ropes or five ropes, which is 50 people, they take them here first the men. They will deal first of all the men. They take them from their room, they use this entrance, and then they come in here. They will be rounding this place 10 times. Thank you, time. of exercise. So this is the exercising area. They will first of all take one rope, which is 10 people. They will be rounding here maybe 20 or 30 times. And after that, there, were, there was a small room here again, where they used to put them. Like if they take um, five ropes, which is 50 people, all the 50 people will not be exercising at the same time. Maybe they will take two, two ropes, which is 20 people. The remaining three ropes will be in that small room, waiting for the others. After they finish exercising, then they have to go and rest, then others will come and do the same thing. So, after they are done with the men, they will go to the women again, and then take them. They also will come and exercise. As this will determine their prizes. How physically fit you are, that will determine your prize. You know, that will make they give a valuable product for a whole human being, like the gunpowder. Yeah? A stick of cigarettes, a spoon, and they will tie, yes, right around their leg, maybe even their middle here, and a side, right around their feet, yeah, they will tie three sides, yeah, so it is not possible for you to escape at all, it is not possible, yeah. So no revolt ever, ever happened here, no revolt ever happened? Yes, there was a revolt, I will explain that when we go to the community, and they also, after the revolt, Watch your step, y'all. The door right here gets kind of steep. I see.
locally called as a room tree. And this is one of the smallest when you visit T.Y. Island. Small. Yeah, one of the smallest ones. Mm -hmm. This one is served as oh, like shit. if you want to see at T.Y. Island, it has a root. This is the root of this tree. They have a root and it comes like this. It provides shade. Yeah, it's a root. This is one of the smallest. If you go to T.Y. Island, you will see a bigger one than this. With different, different shades. Yeah. Yeah. And they're using this as a means of communication when you go to T.Y. Island. If you decide to go by yourself into the forest to walk by yourself and you lost, you just take a stone or a stick, you hit it, you will hear the sound in the village, just stand where you are, you'll go and T.Y. from that point. So they're using it as a means of communication also right in the forest at T.Y. Island. Yeah? So, it goes like this. And yeah, the others can have this same shape, and it has yeah. something like this. Yeah. 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 So the tree is trying to protect itself. Yes. Then at our back here, here used to be a two story, right on top this one. Yes. It used to be a two story, and on top used to be the farm magazine area. Okay, here the British used to keep their. This is where they punished the slaves if they tried to revolt or someone tried to start a revolt. They would put them in this holes as a punishment. Oh, take your time now. You ain't gonna be in no hurry. some of the materials they were using to construct this sleeper. And there are other churches also, like uh, the Maroon Church, the George's Cathedral, the Charles Church. They use most of these materials to construct mm -hmm. the churches. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's proceed. You know, maybe what's going on here. And even here at the cemetery, they used to discriminate the slaves from Europeans or the bridges. Europeans. The bridges people. Yes. Or even anyone that died that is not a Sierra Leonean. So from this point on to this point, all the graves we are seeing, they are non Sierra Leoneans. But amongst, one may say, there are people who, one may say, like um, they've already naturalized, naturalized technically because they were working side by side with the bridges. They were actually Sierra Leoneans, but just because they were working side by side with the bridges, so if they died, they were not buried here. Because from this point on to the side, it was meant purely for the slaves. If they died, they would just throw them in here. And if you come in a bit, you oh, see back some there. stones, huh? Yeah, right. This is the British stone. Mm. Like this one here. And people help them too. It's representing a grave. I would have to pay for it. This one here. This one here. Representing a grave. A slave that died. Very time they were really slave with Indians here. Who's unfortunate to make it to different parts of the world. So when he died or when he died, he or she was very clear. So from this point here, all the people that have gone down to the side, it was meant for Africa, the Alina, to be died. Or, and even not, um, West Africa, because there was the home of Delta 